restriction. But if you're not fasting, you're not restricting your cal calories, you're not on the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients, you're missing out on powerful tools for extending your life, for fighting cancer, for preventing cancer, for reducing the progression of any disease, and for reducing the likelihood of any long-term degenerative disease. It comes to metabolic syndrome, resensitizing our body to insulin, the garage door opener is key, and that means fasting and restricting your intake of calories as well as getting on the Mighty 90 essential nutrients, particularly the water-soluble electrical ones. Those are the ones we run deficient in quickly because we urinate them out. And vitamin E is also helpful. It's not water-soluble, but it can also be helpful for metabolic syndrome. Vitamin E is a liver vitamin. Fatty liver disease affects 100 million Americans. Vitamin E is protective against all fats. That's what we've been saying. Vitamin E is your fat protection vitamin. That's why vitamin E is important for the brain. That's why vitamin E is important for the outside part of a cell, so-called cell membrane. And vitamin E is also fundamental for liver health. You're not going to find vitamin E in food. That's one that you've got to supplement with. Love your liver. Lots of things you could do for your liver. The liver is a, a sugar processing organ, so it makes sense that we'd all have, uh, we'd all have uh, or one out of three of us would have liver problems, fatty liver disease. Fructose, by the way, fruit sugar, is particularly stressful on the liver. High fructose corn syrup. Do you think that has something to do with our epidemic of, of uh, fatty liver disease? I'd say it's a pretty good chance that our intake of high fructose corn syrup, which has increased dramatically at the same time that liver disease has increased dramatically, I would say it's, the odds are pretty good that there's a connection there. And by the way, prescription drugs, metformin, glucophage, diabetes drugs, all prescription drugs, chemotherapy, guess what organ it is that has to process? all of those drugs. Yes, the liver. You never hear about this as a side effect. It's not even a side effect. It's an effect. We, you know, we, we think of side effects when we think of the toxicities associated with drugs, but the fact that the liver has to clear the drug out, that means an effect of the drug is going to be a burden on the liver. Oh, and by the way, you burn through nutrition when you're on prescription drugs. The more drugs we take, the more we need nutrition. This crazy idea that, oh, that nutrient will interfere with your drug. I mean, it, it sounds funny when you think about it, but it's not funny because doctors believe this. They'll tell you, oh, that drug, that uh, vitamin is going to interfere with your chemotherapy. Vitamin E will, will interfere with your chemotherapy. Vitamin C will interfere with your chemotherapy. Vitamin E is one of the most important supplements to take if you're on chemotherapy. Will it interfere with it? It'll make it work better. It'll make you feel better. From, uh, from the journal, uh, from, uh, let's see, what journal is this from? I can't even see what journal this is from. This is from Crossmark, which is a, a, um, a, a service that, that, that I subscribe to where I get all kinds of journal articles. This one, uh, I can't even see where this one's from here. Anyway, c uh, conclusion. This phase two, phase three study confirms the neuroprotective role of vitamin E against cisplatin peripheral neurotoxicity. Cisplatin is one of the nastiest of all chemotherapy drugs. Another one, vitamin E supplementation in cancer patients may have important neuroprotective effect. Another one, supplementation of patients receiving cisplatin with vitamin E decreases the incidence of neurotoxicity. Another one, vitamin E may be an effective therapy in patients with chemotherapy induced mucocytosis. I'm pharmacist Ben. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I am pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. Safe for 4236 is our number. Got a line open for you. 844 Let's see here. Anything else I want to tell you? We're going to talk tomorrow about uh, vitamin E and the lymphatic system and vitamin E and vitamin E's favorite mineral. There's a particular mineral that works hand in hand with vitamin E. We'll talk about that tomorrow. And uh, we'll also talk about vitamin E and estrogen. Do you know what? Vitamin E is protective against estrogenic health issues and uh, it helps balance out estrogen. It, it's one of those antagonistic kinds of vitamins. It has an antagonistic effect against estrogen. We'll talk about that tomorrow as we continue talking hormone health in the skin, particularly the steroid hormones, the fatty steroid hormones, which are made in the adrenal glands and the ovaries. Okay. 844-236-6010 is our number. Maryland in Michigan. What's up? Welcome to the Bright Side. 
Hello, Marilyn. Hey, yeah, uh, yes, yes, I'm I here. think we got a, some background. Hang on a second, Marilyn. Hey, Scott, turn that. I'm on. on. I'm on. No, no, I know. You hang on tight, tight, Marilyn. That's okay. Go ahead, go ahead, Marilyn. Um, I want to know how I can get your product, the Retinol A. How do I? Uh, retinol. Okay, great. And I'm glad you asked. It? That. It's $179. It's an ounce. It lasts you about five to six months. You use it once or twice a week. And it is powerful stuff. In addition to having the same amount of retinol that you would get, or the same, the same retinoid effect that you would get from a prescription product, it's, I designed it, I formulated it to be the equivalent of 0.05% retin-A. Uh, there's a hundred times difference between retinol and retin-A. Uh, in addition to being equipotent, having the same potency as Retin-A, 0.05% prescription, it is a vitamin C product too. So you get a whole big old dose of very premium vitamin C, no preservatives, no wax, no oil, no silicon, no filler, no nothing that you can react to. Most people don't, don't get any kind of irritation or reaction, but you will flake from it. Um, and it's especially effective, by the way, for, for pimples or for age spots, things that you want to flake off rapidly. Uh, and you can find it at Truth treatments.com truth treatments.com t r u t h t r e a t m e n t s truth treatments.com does that help use it sparingly though marilyn don't use it too much because it is pretty powerful well, stuff does yes? it work for an old lady that has, <laughs> has wrinkles uh, it will work here's the deal with retinol you'll get an and with all my truth products really you get an immediate effect you'll get an effect that will uh, that will manifest itself on the skin surface, uh, the smoothness, softness, a color change to the skin. These are surface effects, and you'll get that immediately. But the long-term effects, they require migration of the active ingredient down to the lower levels of the skin. This will occur, and you will get long-term effects in improving wrinkles and fine lines and crow's feet and preventing them, and even if you use it long enough or if you, for enough time, you'll actually, according to the literature anyway, reverse or potentially, I'll say potentially reverse crow's lines, uh, crow's feet and fine lines and wrinkles. Now, I don't know what your skin looks like, so I can't tell you specifically how long it'll take for you, but I can tell you that you will definitely 100% notice results quickly and then also notice results in terms of anti-aging over the long term as well. So it works on deep lines too? Absolutely, deep line, okay. any lines. You're st it doesn't work on the fine. It doesn't work on the lines. It works on the collagen, which then works on the lines. Okay. See, you know, see the difference? We're not working on the lines. The lines are there. We're working on the new connective tissue. Now, okay. keep in mind, Marilyn, super, uh, topical skincare is only a part of the puzzle. You got to be on your glucogel caps, and you got to be doing your protein and essential fats and mighty ninety essential nutrients. All the things we talk about every day here right. on the program. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Happy New Year. God bless you. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. Okay, Robert in Vegas. Welcome to the Bright Side. What's up? Yeah, Ben, thanks a lot for taking my call. Appreciate it. I'll be sure. quick. Um, I was listening to a uh, broadcast of Jim Mars. He's a uh, investigator. I know Jim Mars. I just bought his latest book, actually. Yeah, yeah. I need to buy this book. He's pretty good. Yeah. When I went to the archives of his uh, new show he's got, oh, okay. and uh, a young lady named um, Chris Ann Hall, who does uh, constitutional uh, speeches, uh, classes, and such around the country, okay. started off talking about how she fought a candida overgrowth in her body. Okay. And she went on a, a specific diet to get rid of it, and she's much better now. But okay. uh, among while she was talking about her issue with it a few years back, she said that the body naturally produces candida. Yes, now, she's I right. Now, that interesting because... Number one is toxic, but number two, why it's a balance thing, Robert. Robert, it's a balance okay. thing. You know, we okay. live in we live. You know, E. coli. You've heard of E. coli, right? It's been in the news lately. Absolutely. With do you Absolutely. know that's a natural bacteria in your intestine? Mm, you, yeah, it's part of you. You know, we live in symbiotic relationship, in a participatory relationship with bacteria, with fungus. We all live together, but it's the balance that counts because we gotcha. have this epidemic, and I use that word advisedly, because we have this epidemic of messed up gut bacteria, all right? Technically, they call it dysbiosis, messed up gut bacteria, <clears throat> excuse me, the yeast overgrow. Yeast and bacteria live in a balance. You, you know, if, you, if you're healthy, there's just enough yeast, there's just enough bacteria, they're all lived together in a balance. But when the bacteria die off, 
because of antibiotics in the water, because antibiotics that we take as prescription, because of antibiotics in our food, fish and, and chicken and, and meat and pork, because of uh, uh, excess amounts of sugar, because of poor digestive health, all of these reasons, uh, all of these uh, reasons conspire to mess up our gut bacteria, the bacteria over, the uh, fungus overgrow. Candida overgrows. So the way you restore yourself, uh, restore the balance, is by working on your digestive system. That's what this gal did. You go on a low carbohydrate diet because sugar feeds the bad bacteria, uh, and and yeast yeah, have sugar too. Yeah. Yeah. Zero tolerance. If you got a candida issue, zero. but here's the thing, Robin. I'll tell you what to do in a second. You can go on the internet and you'll get all these candida remedies, candida formulas, candida mm -hmm. pills, candida supplements, things that get rid of candida, but they're not a addressing the cause. And this is what I've been talking about this you know what I'm saying? So if don't fall for the silliness. Stabilize your gut bacteria by using all the digestive health strategies we, we talk about. Get on the bioluminightly essence. Make sure you're eating fermented food, drinking your celery juice and, and vegetable juice, using apple cider vinegar. It's all the things we talk about on this program. Then you work on your sugar. Restrict, your amount of, uh, the, uh, restrict the amount of calories you're getting from sugar. Use the Mighty 90 to help you process sugar. The body will restore, restore the balance itself. You don't need any magical formulas for candida. It's just re doing the same things you do if you have cancer or an autoimmune disease or heart disease or Alzheimer's disease or anything else. And doesn't that simplify things, Robert? You well, it does. Right? And you, she said it also causes it, Candida loves sugar. It loves makes sugar. You eat more of it. It makes you eat more of it. Which can this woman's right on. Cancer, which, She's right yeah, on. It, it, who, who, yeah, who, what's she her was, name? Was, what's this gal's name? Uh, Chris Ann Hall. She's a constitutional lawyer, uh, writer. Uh, She's, She's right on. A class across the country. And she just mentioned that before she got into her cereal box. Tell me about. Uh, I thought that was. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What were you saying? I was just going to say, I just saw it fascinating. I was like, why would your body create something that's toxic? You just explained it because it, it's a delicate balance. It, it's a balance, yes. Does. Hey, where's Jim Mars' show on? What network? It's on, um, uh, I think it's called talklive.com or something like that. All right. I'll, I'll look it um, up. I'll shoot you an email with the link. Would you do that? Uh, ben at KSCO.com. Yeah, that's I great. I love Jim Mars. Love his stuff. But it was okay. fascinating. It was fascinating. Take care, Robert. All Thank right, you, thanks, man. Bud. You just answered the question. Happy holidays, dude. All right. Hang tight. If you're on hold, we will get to you when we come back. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We will return right after this with more good health information and your phone calls. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben from the Associated Press. Hillary Clinton announced Tuesday a $2 billion annual effort to cure Alzheimer's disease by 2025. I am telling you, what is she, $2 billion to do what? How are you going to cure Alzheimer's disease? It's a chemistry issue. It's a blood issue. It's a food issue. You don't cure it, you bonehead. Hillary, that is. You just change lifestyles. A second study from the same, uh, this one is from... Uh, this one is from the Journal of the American Medical Association, Neurology. Insulin resistance increases risk for Alzheimer's disease. Hello, where have you heard that before? Another one from Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism. Diabetes complications linked to rising risk of dementia. You guys, it's so simple. It is so basic. Hillary Clinton is going to take $2 billion. These days, that's, not a, that's chump change, of course, but whatever. Last year, the government spent half a billion dollars on Alzheimer's disease. This year they want to spend a billion dollars on Alzheimer's disease. Total costs exceed one trillion dollars by 2050, according to est estimates. Uh, do you know Alzheimer's disease is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States and disproportionately impacts people of color, minorities, and Hispanics? Which, by the way, all degenerative diseases disproportionately uh, impact minorities. Two out of three Alzheimer's patients are women, implying a connection or relationship to inflammation and the female hormone estrogen, which, by the way, works hand-in-hand -hand with sugar. Sugar potentizes uh, insulin, uh, potentizes the inflammatory effects of estrogen. So if you have an, all, an autoimmune disease also, by the way, which is classically affects women more than men, that's another reason to restrict your intake of fast-burning carbohydrates and sugars and support sugar metabolism. Okay, don't mean to beat a dead horse here. Time to uh, go back to our phones. George in Maryland, what's going on? Welcome to the Bright Side. 
Hi, pharmacist Ben. Thank you for uh, taking my call. Sure. I was diagnosed with uh, multiple sclerosis, and uh, I'm scheduled to take these injections of Revif. And okay. uh, I don't want to do that. With, no, with, uh, you know, that's yeah. I don't blame you. Uh, uh, you're not paying for this. Your insurance company, I hope, is paying for it because that stuff's expensive. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, it's a, the drug they're giving you suppresses your immune system. Short, long story short. Okay.